Hey guys, Auro here. In this video, I will show you how I prepare and slice my models for 3D printing. More specifically, I will show the process using this skeleton archer that I sculpted. It's a, a miniature, very small. And for printing, I will use my frozen Sonic Mini. That's a resin printer. And in this tutorial, I'm using T2 Box. So let's do it. The first step is to import model using this file. You can open OBJ files, STL. Uh, here we have some buttons. We can move our model, rotate it, uh, scale. But it, th this model is already in a good position and good scale. Usually for printing my statues, my sculptures, the first step is to make it hollow, so I can save a lot of resin. For this, I have just to click here, uh, set how thick I want the walls, and click start. But, as this is a miniature, uh, and it's very thin, I don't have to make it hollow, I can print it solid. And when I make my models hollow, I have to place a few holes, usually two holes, using this button so the resin can come out of the the model but i'm not getting into these details let's focus on this model so you can print your miniatures as i do here on this this right side we have this slider that shows us each layer of the print we have a number here which means this is the layer 367 uh, and if I print my model exactly like that, it would be our, uh, it would be 747 layers. And this is very useful for placing the supports, as you will see soon. Before I show you how I place supports, there is one important thing to say. Usually, when you see tutorials, people talking about the best way to print a model using a uh, resin 3D printer, they tell you that it's better to tilt the model a little bit, like this. Because if I print my model like this, the first layers would be, uh, you would have a large area. And usually it's not good for the printer, it causes a few issues. So when you print it like this, in theory you have less uh, problems. And it makes sense, uh, for a while, for a few months, maybe a year, I have printed all my models like this. But I saw some people printing the model directly to the build plate. Oh, I forgot to say, this little square is my build plate. It's the maximum area of my printer. Uh, but, uh, like I was saying, a lot of people were printing the models like this. And the quality was great. So I started doing some tests with my miniatures and it works out that my result is much better if I print like this. Because uh, if I print my model like this, I would have to place a lot of supports uh, down here, like this. And I never could get a really sharp edge uh, for my bases. Usually it was something like this. Uh, it's never perfect. And I have to do a lot of sanding too, so it's a little annoying to print models like this. For most cases, when I'm printing bigger models, it makes sense. Uh, mainly because uh, something that I, I learned about 3D printing is that the areas facing down, facing the build plate, usually get much more smooth. They lose a lot of details and also get damaged because of the supports. So, for example, if I want to print a head, like a, a, a character with a very detailed face, if I print it like this, let me draw a, a, real, <laughs> a real quick face here. If I print the head like this, with this angle, it would be great. This area will be very detailed, but this area will have some supports and will be very smooth. So this is a good angle to print a head. If I print the head uh, the opposite way, like this, it will be very bad because I will have a lot of supports and uh, 
the the face will be very smooth we will lose a lot of details um, so it makes sense this this thing they say about the angle but in this case i found that it's very uh, it, it's much better to print your minis directly to the build plate like this you will save a lot of time because the the, the printing will be shorter uh, you will save resin because you won't have supports here plus you don't have to sand the base, the base will be perfect, as you will see. But it's not a rule, right? I will show you just how I print my models. You can try different settings and get much better results, maybe. So let's move on to the supports. To place the supports, you have just to click here. As you can see, automatically, the model is a little higher than the build plate. It's not touching the build plate. To fix it, you have just to set zero here in z lift height now the model is is uh, will be printed directly to the build plate next i like to remove this raft uh, down here for this i have to select here uh, bottom no oh, sorry raft and set to none maybe in some supports will be there will be ref2 just put none here and it will be fine here you have three sizes three uh, types of of supports you have the heavy one that's larger medium one and light the thicker the support is the stronger it is but also it damages more the 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 model as you can see here the heavy support have a, a, a bigger area contact area to the character so when you remove the the support it hurts more it damages more the the surface so uh, i tend to use this only with uh, some big areas that really need a lot of supports for miniatures uh, medium and light supports works perfectly but if you want a strong uh, support, you can uh, use heavy one and change a little the, the settings. Like here, in the middle, I can make the diameter uh, smaller and the top cone here, I can make it smaller too. This way it will be uh, strong, but not uh, will, it won't damage a lot the, the bow here. But let's remove all to start from scratch the logic about placing supports is to make everything every part of the model touching the build plate because if we simulate here that with the printing you we will see the first layers they all touching the build plate and it's working perfectly but uh, when some area like this this is the the clothes right from the, the, the school. If some area is in the air floating like this, it won't be printed. It has to touch the build plate in some way. For this, we play supports. So if I take the have supports and click here, Shitu Box will create a support. Now, before the, the clothes uh, start to printing, there will be a support that starts down here, goes up, 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 touch the 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 clothes and this way we will have a nice print it's the same for the whole piece like the bow if i i print the models without any support the bow won't be printed because here it's floating it needs to touch the build plate so i i have to pl place uh supports here let's remove it again to start from scratch again one thing that helps a lot to know where we should place the supports is to look the model from below. These red areas indicate that uh, these areas have a, a really bad angle for printing. So if we simulate here the printing using this slicer, we will see that, for example, the gloves here, this area is floating. So it's red, right? It's a little boring to do this, but it's very important if you want a perfect uh, printing. So let's start uh, making supports here. 
Another thing that I like to do is to use the slices, but using it opposite way. Like this. This way I can look the model from here without the base, in, uh, the base uh, distracting me. So let's start with the, the clothes. I have this area that I have to place supports. And as it's very close to the, the base, I don't need a very strong uh, support. So I'll use the light one. I have to place it in the first layer that the, 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 the clothes appears. Like here. So I click here and it's done. There is a support. But there is a pro problem. Some supports are uh, placed on the build plate itself and it's okay. But this, like uh, as these, these clothes are on top of the, the base, the support will be placed here. And sometimes it, it damages a lot the, the base. Like, let me see another example. If I place a support here, it will be placed on his legs. But when I remove the support, there will be some damage here. So one thing that I like to do in some cases is to use these settings. I go to bottom and in contact points, I will put only one. This way I will have less damage. The support is less stronger, but it works perfectly in this case. So the clothes here is okay. It will be uh, all right. Let me see. It takes a while. We have to be patient, but there is not another way. We can generate automatic supports to click in here. Um, all. You'll be, you'll see that G2 box creates spots everywhere, but usually it's not the best option. The best way is to create by yourself here. You see a lot of supports that are necessary. And when you, re you remove all, there'll be a lot of damage on you, your model and you don't want it, right? So let's remove them, remove all, place here. and start checking other areas. I think I can place uh, support here too. Here as well. The good thing here about this base is that it's very detailed, very noisy. So even if I remove this support, the, the damage won't be visible. So it's nice. Because when we have a very smooth area with support, we always can see the damage. Here we can see the bow needs support too, but here I'm using a different way. As the bow will be printed uh, for a very long time in the air, like, like you can see here, a big uh, piece, I will use heavy support. But if I place it here, as you can see, it will be on the base, on his... Uh, food and it's not good. So I will do it like this. I will place it um, in the other area so it, it's, it's touching the build plate, not the base itself. And here, using this button, edit supports, I can go here and start placing it where I want. If I, I think it's too big, I can make it thinner. Here I can move the supports as well to have a, a better angle. Here I can change the depth, so it's not uh, coming on the other side. And here I will check if it's placed in the correct area. Here I can see the best uh, spot to place the support is here, so I'll move, move it a little. Like this. But uh, it's not enough, I think. Maybe it will be... Uh, not enough. So I'll place more heavy supports here with the same uh, technique. Go here, add support, click and edit. Here I think three supports are enough and the good thing is that they are touching 
each other. So they will be stronger if I if you, if we have a, um, a support like this that isn't touching any other support, it gets weaker. So this way they are very solid, very strong. And I think they are enough to print the bow until it starts to print the arm. Here it gets much stronger. For, them, for example, this uh, top part, uh, we don't need, need any support because it's already touching the hand of the, the model. So with the same logic, I will keep doing this with the whole model. Checking everything, changing the, the layers. If something is floating, I will play supports. Trying not to make support touching the, build, the, the base. But sometimes it's not possible. But it's something that we have to avoid. Here his hand is floating too. So I place it, uh, a light support here. And here we see that his ar arm armor is floating too in multiple pieces. So every piece here needs a support. But as you, can, as you can see they are touching the base and I don't like this. So I'll place them away from the base, like here, and add. Sometimes when I have a very, very small piece like this floating, I don't care really. This will be very small. Uh, I think it's better not to place a support there and we won't see any difference. Here, if I place a support on his chin, I have a very, very bad support. So I'll play it, place the support here, for example, and edit it. Now I'm just checking if there's uh, an area I missed, but it looks perfect. As I said, if uh, a very small area isn't supported, I think it's it not doesn't worth to place a support there. So like this, it would be a very nice printing. For printing a bigger model, I would suggest you using a half support. But for my experience, if we print a print a miniature directly to the build place, only light supports are enough. Now that the model is ready, I have just to go here to settings and select my 3D printer. Here in Cheat Toolbox we have a, a, a list of 3D printers. Mine is from Frozen and I'll use this Sonic Mini. If I click there, there will be all the settings ready for your printer. Here you can select the, the resin you're using. I'm using this Frozen Aqua, Aqua Green resin with uh, 50 layers. Here I can select this option, it makes it, it a little smoother and it's all ready to go. So now I have just to click on slice, it will be uh, uh, calculating some things and it will generate these images. Very simple, here we can check if something is wrong, it looks nice. As I said, 747 layers, it will take around 2 hours very quick right this printer is really quick and now i have just to save the file put on the pen drive take to my printer and it's ready so check the result out And here is the result. As you can see, it is perfect. All supports are there, even being light supports. And a great thing about resin 3D printers that uses LCD, like my Sonic Mini, is that I can print multiple characters at once without increasing the printing time. So because of that, I printed 4 skeletons at once in only 2 hours. So here I removed the minis from the build plate using a metal scraper. 
and as you can see, removing the supports is really, really easy. I don't need any tool, only my fingers are enough. And even using my fingers, I'm not damaging the miniature. And a great tip to remove supports easily like that is to remove them before you finish the curing process of your model. This is why I still wearing gloves. The model isn't cured yet. So, in this stage, the resin is much softer. Now that I cleaned my model with isopropyl alcohol, you can see better the details. Yes, I know, I need a better camera for close-up, but even so you can see the details. I didn't have to sand or do any kind of finish in this piece because of the light supports. And because I printed it directly to the build plate, you can see the bottom part is really really smooth and flat. Only here, because I put the supports very close to the base, I had a small issue, but it's very simple to clean up with a simple sanding. So that's it guys, I hope you liked this video. If you do, please click on the like button, leave your comment below, and don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell so you don't miss any of our videos. See you in the next one, bye bye!